guys, it's Miss Sam. And this week in social studies, I thought I would do a small little video lesson to talk to you a little bit about World War II. How World War II really started, how the USA got involved in this big war again. And also to talk a little bit about how Florida, the state of Florida and its people actually helped during this time period. As you know, World War I was a really bad war to start off with. After World War I, we had the Great Depression. So the United States was trying to bounce back from all of that. But while they were trying to bounce back in Europe, some things were happening that really kicked off this big, massive Second World War. Okay, so to this week, you're going to watch this video and you're also going to read the newspaper that I provided and watch a small brain pop video that talks more about World War II and also the newspaper talks about the people of Florida and how we got and those people helped out. Okay, so this is very important. You want to make sure that you are reading this newspaper very carefully and you are taking notes as long, along with my notes from this video and the brain pop video. World War II was a big war, so I want to make sure that you all are taking the appropriate notes so that way you completely understand what is happening. So let's get started and let's talk a little bit about the back history with some terminology. <sighs> Excuse me. So I have some definitions for you. A dictator and a total totalitarianism dictator. I know this one's a mouthful to say, okay? It's total totalitarianism, okay? But let's, before we jump into that massive word, let's talk a little bit about a dictator in general. So a dictator is someone who comes to power. He rises to power. Usually at this time period, it is a male. Okay, so it's a political leader, usually a man, who takes control over a country. So I have labeled two people, Joseph Stalin and Benito Mussolini. These two men were dictators for their own country. This is Joseph Stalin. He was the dictator of the Soviet Union, which is modern day Russia. Okay, so he took over control of this whole country. He came in, broke down the government. He somehow got in charge of the government and built himself up and everyone listened to him. So that's Joseph Stalin. He is a Soviet Union dictator. This is Benito Mussolini. He is the Italian dictator, okay? So he did exactly what Stalin did. He broke down the government at that time period, got himself in charge and brought himself up. He was rising to power. Everyone believed him and trusted him. And same with Stalin. Fun fact about Mussolini. When he, um, after his dictatorship, he was dragged through the cities of Italy by horse and carriage and he was dragged to his death. It's kind of cool. <laughs> so these two men, a little sidebar, these two men were dictators. You know, a dictator is not a great person because they kind of don't have the people of the country in mind. They just go with what they want and how they do it. They don't care how it affects anyone. So that's a dictator. Now we have the fun word, the total totalitarianism dictator, who is also a political leader who not only controls everything in the country, but also everyone, meaning... He tells them what to do, what to say, how to act, how to dress, what it should be like. They're basically trying to make a perfect country, a perfect world in the country that they're living in. And the best example of this type of total totalitarianism dictator is Adolf Hitler. Now, we know Adolf Hitler, because we kind of talked about him a little bit, is um, the dictator of Germany. And we know he was a really, really bad man who stood the Holocaust, tried to exterminate, tried to make Germany this perfect place. But this man had a mission. In World War I, Germany really got defeated. And it was kind of a embarrassment because Germany is supposed to be this great place. In Hitler's mind, <coughs> excuse me, he wanted to bring Germany back up. He wanted people to fear Germany and to let everyone know that Germany is number one. You cannot defeat us. We are stronger than you. And that was his whole plan. And it kind of got started. These three dictators were actually good friends with each other. They supported each other. It was like a triangle. They made a triangle together and it was kind of their way of saying, let's get other countries involved. Let's get our countries, let's make our countries stronger and better. So 
Hitler supported Stalin, who supported Mussolini, who supported Hitler. It was a nice rotation, a nice triangle, a nice circle. But other countries weren't loving the fact that these men, especially Hitler, were coming in and invading, which means coming in aggressively and taking over the countries. And what had happened was that Hitler invaded Poland. And that's really what started this whole World War II with that one invasion, okay? When we invade someplace, it's people that you don't want to and are coming in, okay? So you imagine, you are people of Poland, you are people of these little European countries, and here comes this big army with guns and machine guns and all of this crazy nonsense saying and going straight to the leader and saying, I'm now the leader. It's a really crazy time. And what happened was, Another war started. Now, we know in World War I, we had the Central Powers and the Allied Powers. Pretty similar, except the enemies are now called the Axis Powers. And the Axis Powers included Germany with Hitler in control, Italy with Mussolini, Japan, and the Soviet Union. And I'll talk about why the Soviet Union is in both of these and has two little um, stars next to them, because that's an important part. So this was the enemy side. The enemies were taking over a lot of European countries. The United States at the time didn't want to get involved at all. They were like, this is a European war. We're trying to rebuild our country and our economy after the Great Depression and World War I. There's no way we're getting involved. Until one, it only took one thing to get the USA involved. And that was the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is in Japan, as in um, Hawaii. Okay, these are some photos from Pearl Harbor. It's a naval base, okay? And a lot of men were lost that day on December 7th, 1941. <clears throat> so after the bombing of Pearl Harbor and a lot of men dying, our president at the time, um, President Truman, declared war and said, we are getting involved during this war. Because it's, a, it's how dare you do this to us. Okay. So that's where the allied powers came from. Okay. I'm sorry. It was Harry Truman. We're going to talk about Harry Truman a little bit later. But FDR declared war. Got the USA involved. Okay. So the USA were considered to be the allied powers. And the allied powers, we had the USA, Great Britain, which is the UK, France, other small countries in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union started off on the Axis power side, but halfway through towards the end of the war, um, they switched to the Allied side because Hitler had promised to not invade Russia or the Soviet Union. And he did. And it wasn't good because remember, those three men, those three dictators had a pact with each other that they were not gonna go into each other's countries and tried to take control. Hitler went against his word and went into the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union was not happy about this at all. So after defeating the German soldiers who invaded, they swapped sides and became part of the Allied powers, which was really crucial and really important for us. Because Russia, the Soviet Union, was a massive land country. Okay, So now we have this big country with all these people and all these weapons on our side to help take down these people, which was really important, okay? So it's important to know the difference. They started off here in the Axis powers, but then eventually moved over to the Allied powers, which is really, really important for us, <coughs> okay? So here are some other pieces of information that are important to know. World War II started on September, I know it's hard to see, September 1st, 1939. Okay, that's when the war really started. We didn't get involved until two years later, about two years, a little over two years later, when Pearl Harbor happened, okay? <laughs> so all of this war is happening. And, you know, the USA is now finally involved because of Pearl Harbor. But this is how Florida kind of plays a part in it. And all the American citizens play a part. There was this thing called the draft. And it was designed for boys, young men who are 18 years, 
And you are, and what happens when you turned 18, if you were a boy or a man, you were turned 18, you were automatically drafted into World War II. There was no question, there was no say, it was just what it was. And a lot of the younger boys, 15, 16, 17, all those boys who are younger than 18, would sometimes lie to the, dra the military people and say that they were older than they were just because they wanted to be part of this war. They wanted to be part of the military and they wanted to take down these big leaders at this time period, which is pretty big and important. So we had a lot of Floridians, 250,000 Floridians, men and young boys go off to war. Florida played a big part in all of this because Florida was also a training center. Think about it, we're a peninsula, so that we're part of a land that hangs off or right on the water. And we also are a good place for people to be shipped out and supplies to be shipped out. So Florida was a really big place during World War II. Yes, every other state was too. We had a lot of people all over be shipped out from their places. But Florida, I think, was pretty big because we're a big state in general. We're right on the water. It makes sense that to have a training camp here and to ship people out. Women, this was a big time for women as well. Women were finally considered to be in the workplace. While the men were gone, we still had to make a lot of supplies to ship out to these men in the war. So women who were working as nurses, as teachers, as secretaries, as librarians, jobs that were deemed for a woman, were now being part and taking control and running and being working in a manufacturing place, a place that makes guns, a place that makes ammunition, cars, whatever it is, deemed, which were men's jobs at this time period, was a big step for women, okay? <laughs> so that's really kind of how Florida and its people were helping. You know, without women, we would need there would be a lot of ammunition needed, a lot of guns needed, a lot of tanks, a lot of big things that were needed for this war, a successful war, we would need it. So we have to thank the woman for that too. Okay, let's continue on. So I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but I also want to kind of make this clear. World War II was a world war, meaning multiple countries were at a war with each other. Makes sense for the name. But really, in World War II, there was two separate wars happening. There was the war with Europe, with Hitler, and him taking over all this control. And a war in Japan. Now, Japan, as you see earlier, Japan was part of the Axis powers. So that means Japan's dictator, his leader, was really good friends with Hitler in Germany. And they were on that side. And what happened was that, you know... Pearl Harbor happened, how we got involved. And during this time period, FDR was president. He eventually died. And what had happened was President Truman came to power. And what happened was then he created the A-bomb, which is short for the atomic bomb, which is what we use to bomb Japan. Two places in Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay, so on August 6th, 1945 in Japan, Truman creates the atomic bomb, the A-bomb, in which were nicknamed Fat Man and Little Boy. Fat Man and Little Boy were dropped in two different places in Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That was our move, the first time the atomic bomb has ever been made, the first time it was ever used on a country. We used it as a way to try to end the war, to tell the leader of Japan, don't mess with us, stop doing what you're doing, we got bigger weapons than you do. And that really did work. Okay. <sighs> D-Day is also an imp another important part of our history. D-Day happened on June 6, 1944. It was basically a day that we helped soldiers liberate it, which means freed France from Germany control. Germany was starting to invade France. It really had invaded France. And France, as you know, was on our side, the Allied powers. So Germany was invading a place that was on our side and taking control. And it was a lot of war happening. Okay, So we sent a lot of U.S. soldiers, a lot of Great Britain soldiers, Soviet Union soldiers, onto the beaches of Normandy. Okay, 
Normandy is a place in France. And this was a big day. Okay, so on June 6, 1944, 156,000 troops sailed in on big boats like these up onto the beaches of Normandy and invaded and helped liberate or free France from Germany, which is a big thing. All right. <coughs> the war eventually ended. Remember, there's two wars, war with Europe and a war with Japan. The war with Europe ended earlier, before the war in Japan did. The war in Japan ended on September 2nd, 1945. How the war ended with Europe is pretty much on D-Day, with all this liberation happening. Hitler eventually kind of killed, eventually killed himself, not kind of, but he did kill himself. He realized that a lot of troops were invading. A lot of troops from all different sides were starting to close in on him and the rest of his country and the rest of his uh, troops. So the Allied powers were pretty smart. They kind of imagine if this, a circle right here. Let me get something I can use. Imagine this is Germany. This is where Germany is. The U.S. troops, the France troops, the Soviet Union, Great Britain, are surrounding on all sides the Germans' Axis power. And they're invading and getting closer. And Hitler's realizing that he has no way getting out. Either they're going to come and get him and kill him, or Hitler's going to kill himself. And Hitler did eventually kill himself. Okay. <laughs> that was really the whole war it, from start to finish. These three men were greedy. They wanted more and more. They wanted to be number one. This man especially, okay? They all worked in an agreement to try to be together and be one super big country. Eventually, this man was doing what he said he would do trying to make Germany number one. And the people of Germany really loved and supported him. They really did. They trusted him. And they followed, because he was a true totalitarianism dictator. They followed anything that he said. They believed everything that he said. And, you know, sadly, all these big things had happened. Pearl Harbor is the only way that we would have ever gotten involved. Okay? The invasion in Poland with Hitler and Germany and all these places is how the Great Britain, France, and all these other places started getting involved. If there was no invasion of Poland, we Great Britain and France and all these other European countries wouldn't have tried to help. It was only a matter of time until December 7th, 1941, did we get involved. <laughs> After Pearl Harbor, President FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, declared us part of this war. We sent troops out to try to fight. On June 6, 1944 is when D-Day happened. We liberated a lot of France because France was starting to get taken over by Germany. We liberated them. And... <laughs> 156,000 troops came on the beaches of Normandy, which is where usually around this time period, maybe a few days later, Hitler did, did kill himself, okay? Then we have the atomic bombs. We dropped on August 6, 1945 in Japan. Harry Truman, President Harry Truman, is the one who started creating the bombs. FDR died, so he took over. And that's where we made the A-bombs, the atomic bombs, Fat Man and Little Boy, which were dropped in Japan in two specific cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay. Remember World War II, two separate wars, war with Europe, war with Japan. Okay. And on September 2nd, 1945, World War II was officially over. 250,000 men in Florida Young boys and men were drafted and put into war, okay? A lot of the younger boys were lying about their ages to help out. 
women were stepping up in the workplace doing a man's job for this time period. And Florida was a training camp and a place to ship out and send supplies. So the whole point of this video was to tell you a little bit about history, about how World War II started, what happened in the middle, how did Florida play an impact on this, and how it ended. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and take some notes. Now go ahead and now you can watch the Brain Pop video, which goes a little bit more in depth on some terminology, which is important to know, but not necessarily important for us to really talk about. Okay, and the newspaper. Make sure you're taking notes on both of those things and you can take notes and use this on Friday's activity. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Bye.